Welcome to the course on mobile application development with Genexus. My name is Cecilia Fernandez, and together with Rodolfo Robayo, we will teach several classes that describe the most relevant aspects of these types of applications. The roadmap of these classes is as follows. Characteristics of these types of applications, the possibility to have them work online and offline, the need for them to be native, the conceptual model and underlying objects, the architecture of online applications, the app's design, including its user interface and user experience, prototyping and deployment methods and publication in the stores for the various platforms available, security aspects, and lastly, offline applications, that is to say, those apps that can work even when they're not connected to the internet and their architecture. By way of example, we will use an application that has been uploaded to our samples website. This is a simplified application to show the sessions that are held during an event that takes place on certain dates. We can see it has a menu where we can choose the options to display. For example, we can see this event's sessions. Here we have a list of sessions on the first day of the event, as well as the sessions of the second and third day of the event. They are divided according to the times in which they will be offered. For example, in the first session, there's a list of categories in which it's included, the tracks. There's also the session's name, part of the session's description, and the corresponding speakers. Tapping on this data shows all the information available about this session. We can see the date, time, and room where it will take place, the speakers who will give it, and also a full description. In addition, we're informed whether the session has already taken place. And if there is a preview of the recorded session, we can also access it. The tracks are also available again, that is to say, the categories in which this session is classified. We can also see the actions that can be made on this session. In this case, the session can be shared using one of the programs installed on the device to do so. Here, we're working with an iPad. We may also mark the session as favorite clear it, or add it, for example, to the playlist. That is to say, we will be able to create a playlist with our selected sessions to view them later. If we tap on one of the tracks, we can see all the sessions corresponding to this track. For example, here we see one of the sessions, as well as the room where the session will take place. And here is information about the room and all the sessions that will take place in it. In this case, there's only one. We can also tap on this image to see the map that shows where the room is located in the event venue. From the hamburger menu, we can return to the main menu. Now we can see the list of speakers here. And we can see that within each speaker's photo, there's a motion effect. This means that when the device is moved, the image seems to move as well. And here we can see the speaker's details. The resume. The sessions in which they participate. And we can also go back to see a session's details. We go back. And here are all the sessions that we marked as favorites. We only have one so far. We can even see the tweets associated with the event. Or enter our own tweet. Since I don't have Twitter installed on this iPad, I will be offered to tweet through the web app.
Next, for example, I can see the list of restaurants that offer discounts to the event's attendees. With this button below, I can choose one according to the time I have available for lunch. And I can see the restaurants that commit to providing the service within the indicated time frame on a map. Now, if we use an Android phone, we can see the same application we had before, but with different characteristics because it's another platform. We see the same menu we had on the iPad. And if we open the sessions, we see that they have design differences. For example, the colors used for the sessions. If we browse the different days and choose the session we had seen before, we can also see that, for example, there's a button to share the session. It's a different button because it belongs to Android. In addition, we can also select one session as favorite as we did before, add it to the playlist. The grid that shows the speaker's photos is slightly different. The tracks are also displayed in different colors. And if we select a specific track, here we see the two sessions associated with this track. On the other hand, to return, we have this possibility or the back button on the device. Again, the hamburger menu allows us to open the main menu and see the speakers. If we choose one speaker, we can see that his details are expanded with an abstract of his resume, and tapping on it displays the speaker's details that are now displayed in two tabs. Before, they were displayed in a single screen. Let's also see the restaurants. For example, here, pressing on the button that offers all the options, we can choose to see a map. this time using Google Maps, with the restaurants that meet my requirement of having lunch in less than an hour and a half. This application we're viewing can be considered as a front end, which is an application developed for the event's users so that they can use this information. The tweets are something that I haven't shown here. I'm offered to tweet, and since I have Twitter installed on this device, I can do it directly from here. This application was developed with Genexus 15 for end users. Now I'll show you another application, which is basically the same thing. It was developed with version Evolution 3 but it has been migrated to version 15. It's very similar. We can see all the sessions and switch between dates. By selecting a session, we can see general information about it and mark it as a favorite. We can also see the speakers. In this case, when we choose a speaker, part of his resume is displayed again. And tapping once again on the speaker's details, we also see the information separated in tabs. If this speaker would make more than one presentation, they would all be displayed here as a list. One interesting thing that can be noticed in this application, and that wasn't present in the previous one, is that we have these options at the top in order to edit the speaker's information and change, for example, his country, his name, all his information. We can even change his photo, or we could take a photo with the device's camera or select an image from the image gallery. We can even delete the speaker, and if we open the speaker's list, we can see that we can also add a new one. As you can see, this application was developed to work not only as a front end, 
but also as a backend. That is to say, once I'm logged in, and the login icon hasn't been added here, because no security features have been implemented in this application yet, that step is still missing. But if I'm logged in, and I'm one of the event's organizers, meaning that I will have all the necessary roles and permissions, I will be able to add, delete, and change the speakers, as in this case. I will be allowed to do it from the device itself without using the web backend. The event's participants, the users who don't have these permissions, will not see these options. Therefore, this app will act as a front end for the users who don't have permissions and as a back end for those users who do have the necessary permissions. Here we can explore the tracks available, including the rooms where the sessions will take place, and everything else we've talked about. What we've just seen is an application that will be described through a demo made throughout this course to see its various features. This application is available for download from Genexus server in the Samples section. At the end of this course, you will be able to look into more advanced aspects that will not be studied in detail here.